Why is a significant portion of the Philippines is depicted in red on the map? The red dots seem to cover much of the country, indicating a concentration of something. Red often conveys notions of tragedy like war or natural disasters. What do these red dots signify for the Philippines and its people? The red dots depicted on the map represent four significant factors. Three of them indicate serious threats, while the fourth signifies a less severe or minor issue. But before we explore these red dots in detail, let's provide some essential background information. The Philippines officially the Republic of the Philippines is an archipelago in Southeast Asia. It consists of more than 7,000 islands with a total area of 300,000 square kilometers, which are broadly categorized in three main geographical divisions from north to south. Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. The Philippines is bounded by the South China Sea to the west, the Philippine Sea to the east, and the Celebes Sea to the south. It shares maritime borders with Taiwan to the north, Japan to the northeast, Palau to the east and southeast, Indonesia to the south, Malaysia to the southwest, Vietnam to the west, and China to the northwest. It is the world's 12th most populous country with diverse ethnicities and cultures. Manila is the country's capital, and its most populated city is Quezon City. Both are within Metro Manila. The Philippines takes its name from Philip II, who was the King of Spain during the Spanish colonization of the islands in the 16th century, because it was under Spanish rule for more than 300 years and under American rule for 48 years. The Philippines has many cultural affinities with the West. It is, for example, the second most populous Asian country following India, with English as an official language and one of only two predominantly Roman Catholic countries in Asia, the other being East Timor. Despite the prominence of such Anglo-European cultural characteristics, the people of the Philippines are Asian in consciousness and aspiration. The Philippines is commonly known as the Pearl of the Orient Seas, a title that evokes images of beauty and value. But why exactly the Philippines is called as such? First, let's start with the Orient Seas. Part of the name Orient is an old term that originally referred to the East or the region of the rising sun. In the context of the Philippines, Orient Sea simply means the waters east of the country, including the Pacific Ocean and the South China Sea. The Philippines sits at the crossroads of these two bodies of water, making it a strategically important location for trade and commerce. Now let's move on to the pearl part of the name. Pearls have long been valued for their beauty. The Philippines has a long and rich history of pearl diving and pearl cultivation. For centuries, indigenous people in the Philippines have been diving for pearls in the country's coastal waters. In the 16th century, Spanish explorers discovered the abundant pearl beds in the Sulu Sea, which would become one of the world's most sources of pearls for the next centuries. The most famous pearl from the Philippines is the Pearl of Lao Tzu, a giant clown pearl that weighs 14 pounds and is believed to be more than 1,000 years old. But the Philippines is not just known for its natural pearls. The nickname Pearl of the Orient Seas also speaks to the country's cultural and natural beauty. The Philippines is home to some of the world's most stunning beaches, including Boracay, Palawan and Sergao. Now let's talk about what the red dots represent. To start, let's address the minor issue, which pertains to the concentration of power in a particular region of the Philippines and the consequences of that. The center of power is in Luzon. Luzon is the largest and most populous island in the Philippines, located in the northern portion of the Philippines. It is the economic and political center of the nation. Being home to the country's capital city, Manila, 
as well as Quezon City, the country's most populous city, with a population of 64 million, about twice the population of California. It contains 52% of the country's total population and is the fourth most populous island in the world. It is the fifth largest island in the world by land area. Manila is where the government operates with important buildings like the President's House, Congress, and the Supreme Court. Luzon's strong economy also adds to its political influence since it's home to many industries and businesses. The concentration of wealth and power in Luzon can sometimes lead to differences in how resources are shared between Luzon and other parts of the country. Luckily, efforts are being made to give more power to local governments and spread development across the country. Aside from its urban centers, Luzon boasts a rich cultural heritage shaped by centuries of history and diverse influences. The region is dotted with historical landmarks such as Intramuros in Manila, a well-preserved Spanish colonial wall city, and the UNESCO World Heritage listed rice terraces of Banaue. Luzon also leads the country in both industry and agriculture. Rice, corn, coconuts, sugarcane, bananas, and so on. A central plain stretching 160 km north of Manila is the major grain producing region. Farther north is the spectacular rice terraces of the Efegao Mountaineers. There are extensive coconut plantations on the Bandok and Bicol peninsulas. When power is centralized in one region, it inevitably leads to the following issues. Regional disparities. The concentration of power in one province or city can lead to uneven development across regions with areas outside the power center receiving fewer resources and opportunities for growth. For example, the zone is more developed than Mindanao in terms of infrastructure, education, and so on. And this leads to problems like overcrowding of Metro Manila or the entire Luzon region, political monopoly. When power is concentrated in one province, in this case Luzon, it can lead to a political monopoly where a single group or individual dominates decision-making processes, limiting political competition and accountability neglect of rural areas. Regions outside the power center may experience neglect and underdevelopment, as seen in Mindanao, as government attention and investments are focused on the zone, where power is concentrated. Social inequality. Concentration of power can exacerbate social inequality. Concentration of power can exacerbate social inequality, as resources and opportunities tend to be concentrated in the hands of a few people, leaving marginalized communities behind. The concentration of population and economic activity in one province or city can strain infrastructure and public services, leading to congestion, pollution, inadequate provision of basic amenities, and so on. The second factor that represents the red dots is rebellion in the Philippines. The history of rebellion can be traced back to March 29, 1969, when Jose Maria Sison's newly formed CPP entered an alliance with a small armed group led by Bernabe Bascayano. Less than two years later, President Ferdinand Marcos introduced martial law, leading to the radicalization of many young people and a rapid growth of the CPP and PA. Since the early stages of the rebellion, the island of Samar has been considered to be the MPA's main stronghold, while Samar represents 2% and 44% of the Philippine population and territory. 11% of all MPA-related incidents have taken place on the island. An important factor in the spread of the rebellion was the issue of widespread landlessness. Land reforms provided only a limited solution for the millions of Philippine landless farmers. In the case of Samar, 40 land-owning clans controlled approximately half of the island's agricultural land. Instances of land-owner harassment 
and violence towards working class tenants led to escalating tensions between the two social groups. Another factor into the Summer Island being a stronghold is historically the island has been among the most rebellious against the American Commonwealth rule, the Spanish rule and the Japanese occupation. Recently, villagers evacuated and classes were disrupted after government forces battled it out with New People's Army rebels or MPA in a town in Abra province on Tuesday, just this April the 2nd. The fierce clashes in a village in Abra forced the local government to suspend primary and secondary level classes. It was the fifth documented clash between communist guerrillas and government forces in Abra this year alone. The fierce clashes lasted for hours until around 7 p.m., with clearing operations continuing afterward. The third factor is the effect of climate change on the Philippines. The Philippines is highly vulnerable to the impact of climate change. Rising sea levels, higher temperatures and increased frequency of typhoons and extreme weather events can cause floods, landslides and erosion that pollute water resources, damage infrastructure, destroy crops and lead to loss of lives and livelihoods. In 2022, the World Risk Index ranked the Philippines as the country with the highest disaster risk, critical protection against the impacts of climate change, offering shoreline protection, food control, soil stability and habitat for biodiversity. They also play a critical role in the Philippine economy. Without action, the World Bank estimates that annual economic damages from climate change in the Philippines would reach 13% of the country's gross domestic product. The country also faces a looming energy crisis as its natural gas supply is rapidly being depleted. Finally, the gravest threat currently facing the Philippines is the potential outbreak of conflict between China and the Philippines because of the disputes in the South China Sea. China's sweeping claims from Coast Guard's vessels to patrol those areas, alarming the Philippines, rival claimants and other states operating in the South China Sea, including America. Encounters between the Philippines and China in Asia's most contested waters have grown tenser and more frequent over the past year. As Beijing presses its claims and Manila refuses to seize its fishing and resupply activities to Filipinos and the two shawls, China's Coast Guard has stepped up so-called gray zone activities such as use of water cannon, collision and ramming tactics, military grade laser, and so on. The Philippines' dispute with China Coincide with an increase in security engagements with America under Marcos, including expansion of U.S. access to Philippine bases. Manila is also seeking close security ties with other allies like Japan and Australia. The United States has a mutual defense treaty with the Philippines and has repeatedly made it clear it would protect its ally if its Coast Guard or armed forces came under attack anywhere in the South China Sea, calling the agreement ironclad. If tensions between the Philippines and China escalate into a full-scale war, the Philippines would undoubtedly face significant repercussions. For starters, the bases in the Philippines will be directly targeted by Chinese missiles, and God forbid that a war erupts between the two Asian countries. What do you think the future holds for the Philippines?